Tamron 28-75mm f2.8 DXD or Sigma 28-70mm f2.8 Contemporary. Which will it be? Both lenses came out in 2021, budget and high performing f2.8 standard zoom lenses. And yes, these are high performing budget f2.8 standard zooms. A bit of a contradiction, I know. But follow me and you'll see yourself. Chapters provided in the description. And if you enjoy these Sony videos as much as your wife enjoys spending your money, subscribe. Let's get started with build and handling. These lenses may look basic like pre-surgery Kardashians. However, there are some nice features like this weather sealing gasket at the bottom. You can get wet and stay safe. Good times. Wow. Moving on, there is an additional control. The Tamron has a controllable button and the Sigma has an autofocus manual focus switch. With the Tamron, you have Tamron lens utility and you can control many things with this button, including aperture, infinity focus, and more. Next up, the lenses feel great in the hands. They are not overly large. The Tamron has a contoured shape, which is easier to hand hold. And the Sigma has a very subtle but slightly raised focus wheel and zoom ring. It's only half a millimeter. However, it does improve your grip. Moving on, we're gonna talk about their individual advantages, starting with the Sigma 2870. Apparently, it turns the correct direction. I really don't have a problem with this. However, others may be more sensitive to the direction. The Tamron has USB-C updates, which is nicer than in-body updates by Sony. The Sigma has an autofocus, manual focus, dedicated switch. It's just more intuitive to have a switch that's clearly marked and has a single purpose. Tamron has a customizable button which can do many things. However, it could only do one at a time. It also has an adjustment where you can control linear versus nonlinear focusing. Lastly, while the Sigma has the gasket seal, the Tamron has the gasket and full internal weather sealing. Winner in this category goes to the Tamron. Next up is autofocus. Let's have a look. Both lenses perform very well all the way up to a point where I'm up to the camera where both lenses can lag just a little bit. This is with the camera set to max responsiveness and speed. Probably not an issue in most real world scenarios. When it comes to low light, I feel that both lenses perform very well in this scenario. This is pretty much as good as it gets. And while it seems like it's going to be a tie in this category, it's not. There's one problem that I have with one of the lenses. And that is this right here, this unpredictable behavior. Occasionally the Sigma just goes out of focus and never acquires again. I can't explain why it is. This has happened multiple times, not in just this one scenario and it's in good light. So when it comes to total trust, I would trust the Tamron a little bit more winner in this category. Which is the sharper lens, Sigma or Tamron? Let's have a look. 28 millimeters wide open. The Tamron has a little bit more bite. You can see everything's just a little bit sharper. Here's the edge far corner and everything is just a little bit sharper. This is at F2.8. Moving on to F4 and the Tamron extends the lead. Sigma did get better. Tamron extended it. In the center, they're pretty much the same. At 5.6. I think the Tamron has just a little bit more contrast. And in the edge, far corners, there's just a little bit more definition with the Tamron images. At F8, I think the Sigma catches up. Everything looks fairly comparable at this point. Moving on to 35 millimeters, 100%. The Tamron is just a little bit more crispy. Going towards the far edges, like I said, the Tamron stays a little bit more crispy. Going down to F4, the Tamron gets even sharper and it expands the lead just a little bit. At 5.6, the Sigma gets really close. However, it lags behind just a bit. Tamron is probably at its max. At F8, they are fairly comparable. I would say the Sigma might be even sharper as uh, the Tamron may have dropped off sharpness a tiny, tiny bit. It's kind of hard to see the difference between the two. Moving to 70 on the Sigma and 75 on the Tamron. And wow, the Tamron is in a different league. It's just so much sharper in the center. This is wide open. Moving towards the edge and the Tamron has a slight lead. You can see that it's not super crispy on this fencing material. At F4, the Sigma catches up dramatically. 
At the edge, the Tamron maintains the lead. However, it's not by a whole lot. At 5.6, once again, the Tamron is a little bit sharper and has a little bit more magnification. At F8, at the edges, they are fairly comparable. I would give a slight edge to the Tamron still. This bike just looks a little bit more crisp. In the center, it looks like the Sigma is a tad bit sharper in the center. And I would say overall, the sharpness is somewhat comparable, but the Tamron is much better wide open. Sigma is known for a great bokeh. Can Tamron close the gap? Let's have a look. Starting off at 28 millimeters, we do half body. As you can see, both lenses are reasonably close and it's really hard to tell them apart. Hang tight and I'll reveal which is which in a moment. There is one recurring theme and I think it's that the Sigma is slightly better when you're up close. And when you're further away, the Tamron has a cleaner bokeh. The blur is more natural and pleasing. Things start to change at around 70 millimeters. That's where the Tamron pulls away. It is a little bit better. Super smooth, low distraction. Slight winner in this category is the Tamron. Next up is CA and Loca, AKA Boca CA. Here's the Loca at 28 millimeters. As you can see, we're 100% and there is very little to no loca. Tiny bit for the Tamron, none for the Sigma. And if you look backwards and look at the bokeh itself, there is no lining. So 28 millimeters, not a problem. Here is around 50 millimeters, 49, 45. This is where it starts to creep up as you can see right here on the Sigma and a little bit here on the Tamron. Moving towards 75 where it gets the worst. And uh, even for the Sigma at 75, there's not very much going on at all. As you can see, the bokeh balls, they're fairly clean on the fingertips. There's a little bit here. Um, technically, there is some loca. You can see right there, the skin is a little bit green on both of them. And right here is a tiny bit of like a purple cast. It's not heavy at all. Torture test for CA, 28 millimeters, 100%. And you can see both of it has CA. The Tamron has a tad bit more. Moving to 40 millimeters. And we're gonna go to the far edges where it's worse. And the Tamron does have just a little bit more than the Sigma at 75 millimeters. Both do a fairly good job and it's not very prevalent. This is, I mean, this is as bad as it gets in terms of CA and uh, look at the light. It's totally blown out in the back. So this should show it off fairly well and it's controlled very well. Yeah, this is nothing really to complain about. So the Sigma clears up first as you get towards the center and the Tamron still has some residual. Winner in this category is the Sigma. What happens when the sun hits the front element? Let's have a look at flare and sun stars. Both lenses do a fantastic job at rejecting the sun like a fair skinned Asian. <gasps> the lens on the left has a ring flare and it only happens at 28 millimeters. Can you tell which lens is which? Time for the reveal. That's right, the Sigma performs slightly better than the Tamron in these flare tests. Overall, the control is quite good. We're really splitting hairs at this point and you shouldn't be concerned about one lens or the other. The differences are minor at best. Next up, we'll be taking a look at the Sunstars. Let's finish this up really quick. And time for the Sun Stars. At 28 millimeters, the Tamron has worse flaring. However, the stars are much cleaner. I like the look a lot better. They're nice, pointy, and straight. The Sigma is just a little bit uh, messy. And at the same time, it has better flare protection, stop down. So this topic is a little bit tough and I'm going to have to give it a draw a bit too subjective.
And for the video, folks, time for the video features. Only one of these lenses is parfocal. Can you guess which it is? The Sigma. And just to confirm, let's blow this up 300%. As you can see, there is no focus drift. On the wide end, both lenses have medium to low focus breathing. However, as you progress along the focal length, the Sigma pulls away ever so slightly. It has virtually no focus breathing on the long end, while the Tamron still has a mild to medium amount. So when it comes to overall video features, it's really hard to argue against the Sigma here. It has true parfocal performance, and the focus breathing is very low to negligible amounts. Winner in this category is going to be the Sigma. Up next is size and range. Let's compare these two. Five millimeters on the telephoto end is noticeable. However, it's not groundbreaking. The difference in weight, the Sigma being 470 grams and the Tamron being 540 grams. Again, noticeable, but not a whole lot. Four inches versus 4.6 inches. Now we're talking and it's not about Asians either. Four inch is an important number because a lot of bags are created to fit four inch lenses. Once you exceed the four inch limit, you go into the territory of medium to larger size bags. The Tamron is long enough that it doesn't fit into the Peak 3L with the body attached and long enough that it won't fit into the Think Tank Digital Holster 5. I'm sure there are other bags as well. However, being over four inches long, you're just over the limit and no, you can't make it work. Winner in this category is the Sigma. Let's talk about value. Both these lenses come in at 899. However, the Sigma is old enough to the point where the price has dropped just a bit, like my 40 year old wife. <gasps> these lenses are budget f2.8 zooms, not particularly expensive and give a ton of performance per dollar. Because you can get the Sigma for a little less currently, I'm gonna give the value winner to the Sigma. Final thoughts, these lenses are split on performance, the Tamron being better optically, and that might be enough for photographers. However, if you're a hybrid or traveler, you might prefer the Sigma more. I'll say as the owner of the Tamron G1, that the bokeh and sharpness were never really big issues with me. I always thought that the lens was good enough. It was the size that always irked me. A lot of this comes down to your priorities. Is the Sigma high level enough not to have to deal with a very specific length issue? I happen to think so. However, that's just one middle-aged man's opinion. <laughs> Since I have the 24 GM and the Tamron 17 to 28, the Sigma is about the same size, so I don't have to go bag searching. I could fit it in those same bags. It makes life much more convenient. If you're a backpacker or a larger messenger type of shooter, I think the Tamron is a more attractive option. It has more reliable autofocus, weather sealing, sun stars, sharpness, bokeh. It's hard to deny this lens is superb. Whichever lens you choose, I don't think you could go wrong either way. Maybe you just wanted to turn the Tamron way or turn the Sigma way. You want the smaller one or you want the more optically pleasing one. At the end of the day, if I had to choose one, it would probably be the Sigma. That's because I'm more of a hybrid style shooter. I do a lot of video and I don't do as much landscape as I used to. And stop down performance is high enough on the Sigma in my opinion. I wouldn't be disappointed either way. Anyhow, that's all for today. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.